welcome back to another video I'm recording this like a tenth time so sorry if I <laughs> forget to say something um, but I get better at explaining for each time I record is I just press the wrong button on the camera so welcome back to another video this is the C64 VHDL 6526 project where I try to replicate the C64 CIA chip the uh, complex interface adapter thing and I started on this project back in 2017 and now I have uh, finished the layout of a board which will be the prototype that's interesting so we'll talk a little bit about why I chose this chip and uh, this FPGA here and uh, why I have this board down here this is a breakout board yeah so uh, this uh, down here is for like beta testers I was thinking about so but first I need to test it first myself though so <laughs> but uh, then I need beta testers because there's a lot of uh, this this and that to make it work and uh, we also need beta testers to easily be able to be able to easily update the board with new bitstreams so bitstream is uh, FPGA speak for programming so basically for flashing so you can see we have an USB we have a pad for an FT232H which is a USB to IO thing like FIFOs and stuff I could have just bought one of these guys so from Adafruit which is the same thing just uh, it has all the IO outputs and inputs on the sides so but I put it on a breakout on this uh, design so but I just uh, can populate one of them and maybe many of the other boards I make I don't have to make all of them like uh, let's say I update the board I don't have to put components on it so so that's that so basically it, it can program the flash or this is the flash or the FPGA so so what do we have on this board we have a 3.3 volt regulator there and we have a 1.2 volt regulator a flash a pull up resistors thing LED so when you have finished programming the ice 40 FPGA the uh, LED will light up which is called ice done just indicate and we have and now let's talk a little bit about why I chose this FPGA um, and why would I choose this one when it doesn't have enough IO for this project so I have solved that by adding a um, what is it called multiplexer so it multiplex all um, I could only select inputs right because I can't multiplex bi-directional signals which is a lot of on this board which is quite annoying and uh, so I take all the RS023 which are uh, address inputs and then some inputs like uh, the clock and uh, read write signal and such and then there's a problem why do you take the clock all right so that would be great like just drive the clock directly into the chip and then like run it in the sync with the CPU well uh, um, maybe I need some higher speed in here right and then I need a stable clock so I've added a oscillator here so, but all of this, uh, n and the reason for that is that in, then you can use a PLL in here to try it really fast inside or faster, such that you can do stuff between the um, the uh, faces of the Phi two clock or the C sixty four. Now there was some talk about with the gadget sixty four UK sixty four about having some. Let's see that I'm still recording uh, to use this on the Amiga well on the Amiga I think the frequency is higher in some places so I don't have experience with that so but anyway now it has the potential to run faster anyway so why this any of this doesn't explain why I chose this chip well for it's the package format that's one thing um, 
It also drives the cost up if I use a BGA chip, ball grid. So another thing that uh, drives the cost up is, uh, this is not the reason why, I, but I can talk about that also. Um, all these vias, they are 4.3. So I was checking PCB way and they say that if you go below 0.45 millimeter holes, the price jumps from for four layer boards anyway from uh, eight dollars to 49 or something and then i checked glc pcb it's almost the same thing except um when i choose 0.3 hole minimum which i have to do because that's what i've used here 0.3 then the price is almost the same as glc pcb almost and then as a uh, pcb way so <laughs> So uh, if I could have used 0.45, then the price would have been a lot lower. But as you can see, if I turn on the internal layers there, you can see I have some uh, pinching of this uh, neck there. There's not much going through on the sides of all of this. I will create islands. And, uh, I don't think uh, I will be able to put everything in this format. Uh, so then I probably would have uh, had to widen it. As you can see, it's quite sexy. It's not larger than the original chip, except down here, which where we have the uh, programming ports. So that's great. The other reason why I chose this uh, chip is because it has an open source toolchain, the Yosis toolchain. So we'll get back to that later because I have to port my program, which you saw in my other videos. I got pretty far with the uh, project. I think I was actually finished trying to test that. Because, but you're never finished, right? So that's a good thing about having software because you can update it. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Next thing I want to talk about? Not sure actually. Well. Um, mm, pause there yeah so a lot of common question is like will you release it yeah sure i will put it on github but i will test it first i'm this is one of these projects where i hold it close to my heart because uh <laughs> it's like this is something big i'm trying to do and i don't want people to like copy it right away before i've done it so I know there are some people who have uh, done this project, they have uh, already beta tested and everything. I don't know why they are not sold, but uh, I don't mind, I don't mind. Um, I would just say that uh, it's still recording. <laughs> it, I, it's the thing was that this thing stopped recording me many times before. So <laughs> okay, so yeah, there's also the one in Finland, I think. They used a different chip, I think. I didn't see any... Um, well, they, and they had actually scratched off uh, what chip they had used. I thought that was a bit silly, though. <laughs> and then there was uh, this uh, mock-up 65... I don't know the exact name, but... Uh, hold on. Right, so this page is really old, though, 2018, but this was from Anthracid doing some reverse engineering of a 65,000 uh, series, no, 6500 series of MOS chips. So he has a plan for this CIA, I think. Um, maybe it not, doesn't say so here, but he said he was going to work on it. Uh, not don't know when he's going to finish it, but uh, a lot of great work. And, um, I'm not sure if it's using FPGA on the newer boards. It didn't look like this anyway. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so this is a much more recent picture. So it has uh, like an adapter with uh, some uh, SMD pads there, such that uh, he can have a bigger FPGA probably. I'm not sure actually. So, yeah, really interesting stuff that it does. All right, so. Now I'm going to prototype this. I have made a board. Let's just talk a little bit about the internal layers. As you can see, there's not a lot of space left in here. So also there are like 
three or four power networks. Well, it's five with the ground. So if you see here, we have five volts. We have the regulators that makes 3.3 there. Then you have 1.2 volts. And then we have five volts, which I've just routed on the inside, just not to break up anything in here. Put some constraints because if I need 3.3 volts VS, I have to like, I can't just put it everything <laughs> everywhere. I actually have to put it on the correct place also. Anyway, so I had a problem, as you can see up here. I had to put on this FPGA 1.2 volt on each side. Oh, there, 1.2 volt there and 1.2 volt uh, up here somewhere. There. And if I do that, I will so if I just route a network over here, I would just break up this 3.3 volt thing going on here. So what I figured out doing was to see that, well, this chip has ground anyway, so I can use ground vias. Well, there's some interlay vias, but I don't know if I can use it. So I just did it this way. I made the uh, trace going through there, but then it breaks up the ground. So I didn't like that. So I made like a little patch. <laughs> so, so uh, hold on. If I turn off this layer, you see. It. Yeah, there you can see it. Here it's the patch or the trace, and then I patch ground such that it won't break up the whole thing. It will break up the three point three volt a little bit, but that's okay. So that's not that much using three point three volt up there in a way. There's some, well, there's some. Well, anyway, so I'm really happy about that. Oh, forgot to say, what I, I was talking about uh, common questions. So it's talking about uh, if I'm going to put it online. Yeah, sure. I just hold it close to my heart. Uh, so this is something I like to achieve. So on my own, I don't care that uh, people are doing it. Well, I like that people are doing it too. So no problems there. I'm not in for selling it. Also, I don't like selling because uh, sending stuff from Norway is really expensive anyway, so I don't think. It takes a little bit away from the joy, right from the project, to actually sell stuff. Because then I have to do only one thing, and then it's just soldering. I like to thinker a little bit more. And this project has also shown that I don't have... Uh, that much time really so what about licensing well I was thinking some standard uh, standardizing that you can uh, copy this design you can uh, sell it I won't take any profit from it so feel free to sell it but first I need to check if it works and probably will take a long time also so Oh yeah, before I forget, I used the icebreaker by one bit squared, or uh, by Piotr, I think. I think he did it alone, I'm not sure. But I used that as a reference, it has the same uh, FPGA there. And this is a larger FT2322H, not a 232, but a 2322. <laughs> it has a third uh, port, actually. So I think uh, it was because he wanted some more FIFO stuff for doing, I don't know, bit streams like video or something, I'm not sure. Or uh, data transfers between USB and the chip. So oh, that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, so the nice thing here is that I've uh, used, I just used this as a reference design. Um, the pro how the thing is programmed was a mystery to me, so... I've looked at that from here, and uh, I've also used some parts from this uh, library, like these uh, jumpers. It's nice. And here you can see, uh, you can, I also done the same thing. I think you you break these two, and then push, put a wire across, like they say here. And what this means is that if you program with a USB, it will end up directly in the FPJ. And I think what happens then, is that you can do that only one time or you 
program the FPGA's SRAM, and then when you power it off, it's gone. I'm not sure if you program the uh, one-time programmable fuse bit memory thing, Bob. Lots of Bob, as usual. <laughs> but it's possible to not use a uh, as a uh, flash. This is the flash. I think so, but I, I need to figure out how that works anyway. So, but for beta testing, it's just great to have a flash because then we can uh, update this uh, chip and turn off on and off the power. It will stay in here. FPGA will load and then that is program or bitstream. So that's pretty cool. I think uh, that's the end of the video. I'm <laughs> really happy to say that I have routed the whole thing now. I have no idea if it works. Uh, we will just have to see. And, uh, if there's something more I need to add to the board, maybe I need to widen it a little bit. So that's the problem here. <laughs> when you when you use all the resources you have, well, there's some left though, but then uh, you have put yourself in a corner where you can't uh, change much. So. That's the bad thing, but uh, we can always do it over, right? Now I have a little bit more experience with this, so yeah. So really happy about this. Thank you very much for watching. See you another time. Bye bye.